in the less than a year since Patrick Brown took over leadership of the Ontario PC party, he has made some big changes. He has acknowledged climate change exists and we need to put a price on carbon to tackle it. He doesn't knee-jerk oppose everything the government does. He's opened up the party and made it much more welcoming to multicultural Ontario. He even changed the party's logo, adding a splash of red and green to the mix. Will this put the PCs, who have lost seven of the last nine elections, back in the game? Let's find out. Here's Patrick Brown, leader of the Ontario Progressive Conservative Party and the MPP for Simcoe North. And we're happy to welcome you back to TVO. Patrick, how are you doing? It's great to be back on your show. Pleasure. I want to start with something that's very topical right now. I'm sure you've been... Uh, aware of the news that uh, Premier Kathleen Wynne has said that the current campaign finance rules are now inadequate. She wants to bring in reforms. Uh, what's your reaction to that? Well, we've been pressuring the government for a long time now. We have to clean up campaign financing election rules here in Ontario. It is the wild, wild west. You know, if, you, if you see the third party uh, spending that happened in the last election, it was extraordinary. Uh, but frankly, if you look at how the government conducts them, th themselves, you know, having cabinet ministers with fundraising targets assigned to their ministry, um, having the minister of energy or the minister of health having to, having to govern the ministry, but then fundraise from the same people they're governing, uh, is a recipe for um, unethical behavior. And uh, you know, I, uh, I, I'm hoping the government is saying right now that they're going to act, and it's not mere words, because the worries, they've talked about this before, and they've said, we want to do something down the road. And now they're saying, again, they want to do something down the road. Um, if they do something, um, that will be in the best interest of Ontario, and I hope they do. Um, but if I'm, they ban corporate and union donations, do you think that would clean things up a lot? You know, I voted for that in Ottawa. You know, when there was concerns over the sponsorship scandal, when there was a huge abuse uh, under the um, Liberal... Uh, party at the time. Uh, everyone knows about the sponsorship scandal. It resulted in the Accountability Act, which uh, took out, um, it really cleaned up uh, the ability for money to influence the political process, but it actually wiped out uh, union and uh, corporate donations. I voted for that. I thought it was a step in the right direction for Canada. Um, you, you know, know I, some people think that's just moved it underground. It hasn't actually cleaned things up all that much. Well, Is it, that the experience it, from it, Ottawa? It, that's not my sense. If you look at if, if you look at a federal minister, he has no mandate to fundraise. The Minister of Health doesn't need to fundraise off, uh, off health providers. The notion in Ontario that the Minister of Energy is, is going to make energy decisions and the people that he makes those energy decisions around are also expected to attend fundraisers. It creates a, a level of influence where you have to buy the ear of the government. That's not right, and that's why something has to be done. They do say that if you were in power, you'd be doing the same thing, that this is a, not so much a liberal problem as a government problem. Well, government takes advantage of the situation. But, you know, I, I, I was in government. I was part of a government in Ottawa where we voted to, get to, to do the exact opposite. In 2006, when the Conservatives took office, they could have... They, they could have continued the same approach, which is fundraising and having that close, cozy relationship between lobbyists and, and, and political fundraising, and they didn't. And, you know, I, I think what we've seen, though, happen uh, in Ontario is taking political fundraising to a new level. You know, it's one thing to have, you know, Joe's Electronics give a, a, a business donation. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing is um, ministers spending more time fundraising than doing their jobs. What you're seeing is more stories in the Globe and Mail and the National Post and the Toronto Star and, and, and all the papers uh, about shady fundraisers um, than we've ever seen before. And I think that's why there's a growing sentiment that something has to be done. Okay. I want you, if you would, to look at the monitor over my shoulder there because we're going to play a clip of you from your recent annual general meeting that the PC party held. Roll the clip, please. Compassion and prosperity go hand in hand. A green environment is necessary for economic growth. Starting today, our party is embarking upon the largest, most inclusive policy development process ever undertaken in this country. Every member of our party, everyone in Ontario will have their say. We don't have a monopoly on good ideas. I want our party's policies to reflect our province, to be as diverse, new, and innovative as our people. No one should be left out, and no one will. Okay, for the last many years, when people in Ontario think Ontario PC Party, they think probably tax cuts, spending cuts, fire 100,000 public servants, 
climate change isn't for real. Uh, if you go back far enough, faith uh, funding for faith-based schools, chain gangs, the group that decried foreign workers. And I guess I want to know, how do you plan to change the channel on that? Because I presume that's not what you stand for anymore. No, and I'm going to continue to, to speak from my heart about the issues I, I care about. And frankly, you know, I don't think that's the conservative movement that I recognized. Um, when I think of someone like Bill Davis, uh, he, the modern education system uh, it was the one, the, the college system uh, is an example of the apparatus that, that he built. Um, and if you look at the, creating the ministry of the environment, a progressive conservative legacy, um, and you know, I believe the issues we're talking about at Queen's Park are, are very much in line with our, with our history. I think it's one of the reasons why, why we continue to see our party do so well in by-elections, doing so well in public opinion, is because we're talking about the concerns that we're hearing across the province by actually listening and listening relentlessly. And that's what this policy process is going to be about. I think a lot of people want to know, though, what kind of a conservative you are. And I do recall when you gave a speech at uh, one of your conventions, I guess it was up in, well, it, I think it must have been in Brampton because you mentioned Bill Davis's name about 15 mm -hmm. times in the speech. And I think they want to know, are you a Bill Davis conservative? Well, you know, I, I greatly admire uh, Bill Davis. I, I think he was one of our finest premiers. But I do believe there's going to be a different solution for every age. Sure. And, and as much as I may feel very comfortable with the policies that he advocated, um, I think the challenge is today, you can't put um, the, the prescription from the, the 1970s or frankly from the 1990s either in place in what, 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 what we're going to need in 2018. No, I totally get that. Yeah. But I, I, again, I, I, are, you a, are you more of a, well, I guess when they say a Bill Davis conservative, are you a progressive conservative or are you a Stephen Harper conservative, which is not a progressive conservative, it's a different kind of conservative. I mean, you sat as one of his backbenchers for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So as people try to get a better sense of what kind of conservative you are, you know, so what's the adjective? You know, the, the, I've always said I'm a pragmatic, progressive conservative, and um, I know you ask uh, about defining that. Uh, being a pragmatic, progressive conservative for me means uh, supporting what's ever in the best interest of Ontario, regardless if it's originally an NDP idea or a liberal idea. If it makes sense, we support it. Do we, do we, do we, I don't believe in you know putting partisan blinders on. Uh, but in terms of Conservative leaders that I, I have admired, you know, obviously Bill Davis being one of them. Narendra Modi in India, his his focus on drawing investment, uh, you know, Jean Charest's passion are you know all examples of the type of leaders that I've greatly looked up at. Uh, it's, you're in Harper's caucus for ten years. I'm kind of curious why you didn't put him on the list. Well, you know, you know what? I, I think there's there, there's a lot of there's a lot of good that Stephen Harper did. Um, yeah. Very rare for a prime minister ever to win a fourth mandate, um, and so uh, the fact that he was prime minister for nine years is, is is an accomplishment. And I think what he achieved on the Accountability Act, frankly, some of the work he did on the environment that never he, he never got recognition for. I know in my own backyard, cleaning up uh, the, the lakes in the country, like the Lake Simcoe Cleanup Fund that was matched in in other water bodies uh, across the country. There was a lot of good work. The Prime Minister Stephen Harper did. I don't think it's recognized today. Be that there, there tends to be uh, um, a period of reflection before uh, uh, you know prime ministers uh, achieve uh, um, more of a statesmanlike role, and that usually happens the further they're removed from office. But again, as we think about what the PC party under Patrick Brown is all about, are you still the party of tax cuts? Well, you know I. If Ontario is in a position where we can afford tax cuts, I would love to uh, limit uh, the. I would love to limit the burden that government has on on businesses, on people. It's one of the reasons that the proposal we came out with on cap and trade was that every cent raised from cap and trade would go back in tax relief. I guess the type of conservative I would describe myself as is that I believe in fiscal responsibility, um, but I also believe uh, that we have a duty to protect the social infrastructure of the province, and that, that means the environment, that means uh, health care, it means education, um, and it means being unafraid to put forward conservative ideas on those fronts. I'll be talking a lot about health care, education, and the environment, and frankly, I think as conservatives sometimes before, we've shied away from those conversations when I think in those areas there's a desperate need of new ideas. You've shied away from them because I think previous conservatives have believed that 
those were liberal issues. The liberals owned those issues. Are you not prepared to cede those issues to the liberals anymore? Not for a second. And, and, and frankly, I think the liberal record on those files is abysmal. If you try to find me a single nurse or doctor in this province who has any confidence in Eric, Eric Hoskins, and, and, and you would struggle to find a health care worker with confidence in the health minister. Uh, you know, the, the fact that we're spending 39 cents uh, 30, 39 cents on every dollar in home care on administration, the fact we've created these huge new levels of health care bureaucracy at the expense of patients, uh, desperately we need a different approach. In education, the skills mismatch we have, the Conference Board of Canada says we lose $3.7 billion a year for jobs that are available in Ontario that we haven't trained people for. And the more I travel in Ontario, the more I hear about this. You know, going to Waterloo and having tech companies tell me they have to hire out of California because we're not graduating people with the programming they need here is shameful. I want to graduate young people here for the jobs that exist in Ontario today, not 20 years ago. And we've got an education system that's still graduating people for jobs that existed in, in a past era. You know, we graduated 9,000 teachers last year for 5,000 teaching positions? Let's graduate people for the jobs that actually exist. Is, is the PC party of Patrick Brown the same PC party of Mike Harris and Tim Hudak in as much as you won't be afraid to take on the unions if you think it's required? Well, you know, I, I think we're all in it together and, and I pride myself on having good relationships with the broader public sector. I don't view the broader public sector as an enemy. Uh, I view, I'll view them as, as a partner. Um, whether it is uh, police officers, firefighters, paramedics, uh, um, whether it is private sector uh, unions, whether it's for the teachers unions. I went and attended the two teacher union conferences last week, got a warm uh, reception. Um, How many it, votes in that room do you think you had? Well, you know what? Uh, we had quite a warm applause. And uh, um, the, the, the former head of the teachers union told me that he had never heard a, an applause for a conservative like that. But, you know, you, you don't make anything of an applause. but. When I talked about the need for financial literacy and coding and, and, and having a conversation about what we have in the curriculum to graduate young people for the jobs that exist today, teachers union reps were saying that makes a lot of sense. And part of it showing up, when I was told we hadn't had a conservative ever show up at the French Catholic uh, and English teachers union conference, I was shocked. When they told me that we hadn't had a conservative leader at the OECTA conference for the uh, English Catholic Teachers uh, Union, they hadn't had a conservative leader there in over a decade, um, we have to be there, you have to show up. We're not going to agree on everything, but my door will never be closed. And regardless if you belong to a union or you don't, you know, our door will be open to good ideas. And frankly, some of the best ideas I've heard so far have come from, from, from unions. The police uh, union suggestions on mental health have been fascinating. Um, it, you actually have to listen, you have to, you have to have open ears. I don't know if you saw the piece in the Toronto Star uh, a couple of weeks ago by Michael Warren, who used to run the post office in Canada who asked what brand of conservatism, and here's a little excerpt from it. He said, delegates to the recent Ontario Progressive Conservative Convention will be forgiven if they went home wondering what their new leader, Patrick Brown, really believes. Even his staunchest supporters admit Brown is enigmatic. More than that, he's shown a willingness to compromise long-held ideas, if that's what it takes to advance his political career. In the space of a couple of years, he has swung from a strident social conservative to a liberal light leader with unnerving ease. Is Brown simply trying to redefine himself, or is he a political chameleon who's willing to advance almost any policy to gain power? You know, one of the most interesting things after the convention was, um, I think liberals are nervous uh, about my speech. Uh, you know, a number of reporters were commenting on, on social media, on Twitter, that the liberals were uh, dysfunctional in the sense that they didn't know how to uh, attack me. What do you think? Um, you know, Adrian Morrow, for example, tweeted they've lost their best line of attack on the environment and instead of welcoming, you know, the, the fact that they had someone, a conservative leader who wanted to talk about the environment, they were immediately, immediately critical. You heard uh, similar comments. You know, Michael Warren obviously was a, a liberal uh, appointment uh, and, uh, you know, I, I recognize that um, people who have been uh, uh, friends and appointees of the, the liberal government in the past um, are going to feel threatened by a conservative leader, unafraid to talk about education, health care, the environment, um, about how to make Ontario a destination for an investment. They're threatened right now because they're continuing to see um, the Liberal Party in a difficult position. After the Manitoba election, 
Kathleen Wynne will have the lowest approval ratings in Canada. Um, the by-elections we saw in Whitby, Oshawa and Simcoe North were some of the worst Liberal results we've ever seen. Um, so I expect them to continue to attack me and, and to say, um, you know, rather than defend their own policies, you know, to make accusations that are, that are, that are baseless um, against me. And I, I, and I know they're saying, how dare Patrick talk about the environment? Um, you know what? I got involved in politics because of the environment. Um, I listened to, to Brian Rooney speak about acid rain, um, and I told my father, who was an NDP at the time, that I wanted to become a progressive conservative. I wanted to go volunteer for the progressive conservatives. Um, so the notion that I can't talk about the environment and the liberals think it's disingenuous to, to, to give a major speech at a convention about the environment and about climate change, what I would have preferred for Kathleen Wynne and, 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 and liberals like Michael Warren to say is rather than to attack, 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 what I would have appreciated is say, I'm glad we're at a point in Ontario where all three parties view climate change as a serious threat, that all three parties want to do something about it. We shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't always have to uh, attack your political adversaries. Now, I appreciate that, but the, the small C conservative part of your base <sighs> How do I put this? We're not thrilled with the position you took on climate change. And you heard at the convention where we showed that clip of, of the speech you gave, you heard a few people yell out, oh, no, when you said that. How worried are you that you're going to lose the small-c no. conservative base you of, know, that, of your party? Th there's two approaches to this environmental challenge. There's the Kathleen Wynne approach, which is a $1.9 billion cash grab. And it can be spent on whatever, sh whatever she wants. Frankly, we've already seen items spent on it that have nothing to do with climate change. It is a revenue grab for the government. My approach is that it should be mandated by the Auditor General, that every cent should go back to tax relief, that we want to do good on the environment, but it shouldn't be an excuse for bigger government. That is a conservative approach to fighting climate change. I do believe the small C conservatives in our party uh, are, are supportive of that approach. We, had a, we actually had a caucus discussion on this, and there was a united caucus position that this was the way forward. Um, and any time that you have the courage to present change and to put forward new positions for a party and new ideas, there's always going to be those that are um, hesitant towards change. But in my heart of hearts, um, it's the right thing to do. That climate change is a threat, and I wasn't going to stick my head, my head in the sand, and I, I feel very comfortable that I took the right position. Here's how McLean's magazine referred to it a couple of weeks ago in the headline that says, 2008 all over again, question mark. Brown has conveniently forgotten that former Liberal leader Stéphane Dion campaigned on the exact same idea, a revenue-neutral tax plan called the Green Shift. So have Green parties all over Europe. Conservatives have long said there's no such thing as a, quote, neutral tax. To them, it is the Liberal unicorn. So why would this be any different? Uh, do you think Stéphane Dion was onto something with that Green Shift in 2008? You know, I, I think there, there were some different challenges with, with the Green Shift in, in, in 2008. But the notion that conservatives haven't been talking about climate change around the world, uh, I think, is incorrect. It may be new here in Canada what we're embarking upon. But you look at David Cameron in the United Kingdom, one of, one of the world leaders in tackling uh, climate change. Uh, frankly, the first cap and trade was Brian Rooney and Ronald Reagan and how they dealt with acid rain. Um, so I, I don't think it's inconsistent with um, the conservative approach uh, globally um, with uh, recognizing this as, as, uh, as a serious threat. You do believe in a price on carbon? I do. I, I, I believe polluters must pay, and I, I believe that's a responsible approach to the environment. And how has the base responded, in your view? It has been overwhelmingly positive. Um, uh, and I can tell you from uh, party members to former leaders to former prime ministers um, emailing me saying, uh, wonderful, wonderful work, keep it up. Um, it, we have an energized party right now. Our membership uh, levels are higher than they've ever been in, in the modern era. Uh, we are seeing more volunteers uh, come to party events than we've seen before. Our convention in Ottawa hit records. We had more young people than we expected. We had more cultural communities than were anticipated at a, a, a party convention. Uh, and we're seeing growth in the party in areas that Frankly, we haven't seen it from huge levels of activity in northern Ontario to downtown Toronto. Those are positive signs for the, for the party. And it's positive because we're taking on issues like the environment, health care, and education. And we're not running from any of these issues anymore. So you are predicting that you will win Toronto Centre in the next election? 
I, I am predicting we're going to win a bunch of seats in the, in the city of Toronto in the next election. Is Toronto Centre one of them? You know, I'm going to go after. Stay tuned. I'm going to go after every seat. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, one of the things of the last federal election, I guess, that we learned is that a lot of conventional wisdom is really uh, very conventional and not very wise, because you had a leader of the third place party pledging to run deficits when we weren't in a recession. He wants to add more than $100 billion to the debt of the country. And lo and behold, uh, for the first time ever, the guy goes, uh, takes a third place party and is now the government of Canada. I wonder whether you think there is a lesson for the Ontario Tories in that, insofar as tax cuts, balanced budgets, and spending cuts are not the magic bullets they once were. Do you think so? You know, when, when there's the ability to offer relief, I think government should. I don't think government should exist for the sake of existing. I don't think you need to have a program that's no longer necessary. I just think voters want you to take a pragmatic approach, or a reasonable approach, uh, to how we can make sure that uh, the burden of government is as minimal as possible, that if you work hard in this province, you can succeed. I do believe that they want us to balance our books. Um, you know, Justin Trudeau took a, a, an approach that I disagree with. I don't believe uh, that we should be running on um, high debt and, and, and a high, high tax uh, approach. Um, I think governments defeat themselves. As much as we can look at Justin Trudeau's um, platform, uh, the reality is after nine years in government, uh, Stephen Harper had high disapproval ratings and that someone was likely going to um, displace him and it was going to be one of the opposition parties. And Thomas Mulclair didn't run a strong campaign. Justin Trudeau ran a stronger campaign. And I think that's probably more of a reason than it is a referendum on balanced budgets. Because I think if you ask Canadians if they value balanced budgets, they probably do. And I think there's a lot of people disappointed that Justin Trudeau promised a $10 billion dollar uh, deficit, and then all of a sudden, with a blink of an eye, it breaks that promise that it's a $30 billion deficit. Uh, so I'm not running away from the notion of balanced budgets. I still fundamentally support them. Okay. Uh, let's have a little fun here for a second, okay. shall we? I know you guys redesigned the logo of your party. And uh, Sh Sheldon, can we put this up here on the monitor here? The PC party has a new, fresh logo, where the P and the C are now merged to suggest the progressives and conservatives are one big happy family. You've got a little splash of green in the middle there. I don't know if that's a marijuana leaf or just a recognition that the uh, environment has a larger role to play in your party. And then, this past weekend I was in Italy, and son of a gun, the Partito Democratico, which is the Socialist Party of Italy, has the P and the D on top of each other with a little splash of green and some red in there as well. And Patrick Brown, are you telling us something about the Ontario PC party that we need to um, understand a little bit better? Well, my mother has Italian heritage. Um, <laughs> maybe you know, on one of our visits to Italy, I, in the distant, uh, in the distant, I saw saw one of those logos. No, but in all seriousness, I, I think our logo uh, change was about highlighting that the modern progressive conservative party is inclusive, that bringing the colors together, drawing them from the flag, shows that everyone is welcome in the Ontario PC party. And I think the, the, the colors coming together are symbolic of what we're trying to say, that no matter who you love, no matter where you worship, no matter where you were born, no matter where you work or how much money you have, if you believe in fiscal responsibility, if you believe in responsible, transparent government, that you have a home in our party. Uh, I know you just said that you thought governments defeat themselves. So in our last minute here, can I have a better understanding of whether you think your main job over the next two years is basically just to keep your head down and let these guys defeat themselves? I think it's more than that. One, um, I, I think they are well on their way to doing that. I, I think obviously the public is very disappointed with the state of affairs, with the four OPP investigations, with the job losses, with the financial disarray the province is in. But at the same time, um, they felt that way in the last election. There was huge levels of disappointment. Uh, you have to present uh, a credible alternative. You have to not simply criticize, but come up with solutions. And you and, intend to do and that. And that's why, for the, uh, the big debates we're having at Queen's Park, we're not simply criticizing, we're coming up with alternatives. On the cap and trade debate, we didn't simply criticize, we came up with our own alternative. And we're going to continue to do that. We'll be a party of ideas. And we'll have you back frequently to discuss it. Patrick Brown, it's good of you to come into TVO tonight and share your views with us. Thanks so much. My pleasure. That's the Leader of the Opposition, Patrick Brown, the PC MPP for Simcoe North. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.